Hello everyone, welcome to History Forge. My name is Taylor Hamlin. I'm going over week 16 now of our little project-based learning journey. And it's been, again, like I said last week, it's just getting to the point where it's really fun to see all of the students' ideas really start coming together. Um, you know, by, after 16 weeks, the students have read articles and books about their topic. They have watched videos on YouTube and other device or on other platforms. They've read articles. They have questioned each other. They've literally learned more about themselves. I really truly believe that because we spend so much time on it. And you know, by this point too, we've really done a lot of practice on learning how to analyze primary sources. So really, it's just a really great point to see a lot of the you know the fruits of their labor come to fruition. Um, it's just it's it's really fun. It's I, I enjoy this part the most, just because I feel like all the hard work is now starting to pay off. Um, so it's really enjoyable. The kids have got their research questions done, and we are getting to the point now where they um try my words. Uh, so they have their research questions done, and now they're actually designing their projects. So we've talked about like what those different designs look like, and yeah, we're just jumping right into it. So I'll go ahead and get into like what we did on week sixteen, and just you know just. See if this will help everybody out. Um, I have this video called Study Tips with Mr. Booner, Mr. Hamblin. It's on the YouTube channel if you're curious. Um, you know, I posted it other weeks too, and I know I've shared it with other teachers already. Um, you know, if you're a parent watching these, definitely watch it if you haven't yet. It's really valuable. And really for me, it's just really nice to see these things done with collaboration like among staff. Um, you know, there's so many people that work at a school, but so many times we actually don't help each other. Not because we don't want to, it's just... We don't know how to, I don't think. Like sometimes it's just you know, we get on our own little world of our own curriculum, our own designs, and we just don't really help each other or hold each other accountable. So I don't know, you know, one of these, and this idea that came to me just talking to Mr. Boonder. He's, you know, a good school friend of mine. So I think doing that more is going to be helpful. So go ahead and watch the video. If your teacher watches this, definitely do, do something like that with your counselor. It's kind of a fun way to show kids that all the adults together are teaching them, not just one person at a time. Um, we went over their data collection, so I've talked about this with other teachers. I think this is a Google Doc. I'll open this up. Um, I've talked about this before in other videos. We go over data stuff. I can maybe see if I can find an example with no name. Be right back. I found one. I'm just gonna hide the name of it. That'll work. All right. So this is what the data collection looks like. So I'll kind of show you. Those are different skills the students have, and as you can kind of see. They have different check marks. So this student actually had basic at first on a couple skills. And then as you can see, they redid those skills and got proficient. So that's really nice because the kids learn exactly what standard they're not understanding. And I give them videos to help them. So like these three videos are all about the race strategy. So students learn exactly what they need to do in order to improve themselves. So if a student's not a proficient, I do tell them like you need to get to that point and this is how. So that's how our semester tests will work. If their students aren't at proficient yet, I will test them during the semester test time to get at proficient. And if they're not there, they need to be. Um, so that's how that works. Let me see if I can get back. And then we also started working on our research questions. You know, I do these videos a week ahead. So right now we're actually in week 17. But in week 16, we are starting how to create our research questions. The document looks like this. And the document's really helpful. I liked how it worked this year. I did a little reorganizing from last year, and that was a really good idea. And I put some, you know, videos in here to help uh, students figure out like what a research question is. We dumped a lot of the research questions into here, which was really helpful. And as you scroll down, you can kind of see where it says step two, connecting main research questions with the yearly themes. This all was part of that process. This is all was exactly what we did um, to make those questions better. So every step had something to do. And students eventually had to get down here to step three where they made their questions more specific. And remember, I put this, like all of these links, in the video description. So if you are a teacher or a parent that wants to see these, if you're a teacher that wants to copy it, feel free. I don't mind. Um, but really, for me, it's a really great way to show students over a long period of time how to make a good research question. Um, you know, as, as teachers, I don't think we focus on that enough. A lot of times we give a research project out and we say, make a research question. And the kids have really never done that. Like, they've done it, but they've never actually, like, learned what a good one looks like. Um, a lot of it's trial and error, but it's trial and error over years instead of over a week where they can really learn from that. So I think it really is our job as social studies teachers especially to teach them how to do good research just because research is such a fundamental part of social studies that um, – Really, I do feel like we need to be the class that steps up and does those things. So if you're a social studies teacher, that's kind of my call to action for everybody. 
be the research class because we really should be teaching these guys these things. Um, so again, that's how we do it. And going back into this, that's what we did on Monday. So a lot of basic stuff on Monday. The students also like got to read their history books, and um, the history books have been now with us for a few weeks. Um, I get them until the end of December, and I have to take library ones back. But I'm gonna tell kids, you know, if you really want it, go check it out at the library because it'll be back there. Um, all right, scrolling down to December. I'm sorry, uh, day seventy, December fourth. Um, we had a primary source analysis video. Um, you know, I've been doing these for a while. I kind of click one open. It's very similar to these videos where I'm, you know, my yeah, head is up here and I'm talking about what's going on. So if you want to watch these videos, feel free. I think they're helpful for students. And I think it's telling, too, again, this is kind of out to teachers. A lot of the YouTube videos I see are, like, online from history teachers are about content. They're not about analysis. Like, you're, you'll be very hard-pressed to find videos that analyze primary sources or like connect big ideas to each other. It's for the most part a lot of content stuff and so I think that's fine. Those are, those are fun videos. Like I use Hip Hughes, I use uh, Armchair Historian, I use Simple History, I use Crash Course History. I think those are great videos to help kids get the broad idea of what's going on and it's kind of a nice way to like you know encourage kids to work while I'm doing something else like maybe doing an intervention or something. But we need to teach kids how to analyze, too. They need to learn how to critically think. And right now, there's not many history teachers, you know, not to humble brag, but I'm the only one that I've ever found that's done that. And I would love to see more. So if you're a teacher that watches these and you want to, like, partner on these things, please let me know because I would love more perspective because I, for sure, am not the only expert out there. And I know I have a lot to learn. So if anybody wants to work with me, feel free. Um, so we did that primary source. On Tuesday, we also did primary source analysis. So it was another YouTube, or it was a... Uh, video that explained how to do it. I wasn't here that day, now I realize. So the students had to watch this video, and that video t like told them what to do for this analysis. And that was part of their data collection too. So, you know, last month before semester testing, we do a lot of analysis, because I need to figure out where the kids are at. Um, oh, what just happened? Oh, okay, it refreshed for whatever reason. Um, but we do a lot of analysis just because the kids need to learn how to do it before their big projects, and I'm really proud of how hard the kids have worked and how much they've shown me that they do understand how to do this analysis stuff. So overall, it's been a really good time. Um, so we did the analysis stuff. We're moving down to Wednesday. Um, we did more creating a research question. So I made a video that reviewed like what I think a good research question looks like. I always have students who are a little bit ahead of everybody just because they're doing their stuff right, and so I put them ahead. And I, it's nice because I get to use their examples for everybody else. And so I asked for this student's example. You know, it's a YouTube video. I can open it up. Um, and all these YouTube videos are on my uh, channel. So if you're ever curious, feel free to use them. Hey everyone, this I'll pause me. So this video goes over not only how to do the research question, but it also... Shh, Taylor. Oh, man. He does not want to stop talking. There he goes. He's done. Um, but these research are so nice because they teach you how to do these skills. And it's also great because it shows a student's perspective. And these are the videos I give to people. Like, I tell students who are absent, like, there you go, go do it. And if you're confused, ask me questions. And it's nice because then I can continue working with the kids who are have been here and continue to, you know, keep everyone at pace. And, and for the most part, the videos work really well. Students always will have questions. But they normally either email me or they come to me in person during, like, study hall or homeroom, and we figure it out together. Um, so, yeah, the videos are great. Feel free to check them out if you want to. They're all on History Forge. Um, going down, we have where it says creating a research question. Again, I gave more time to do that. Um, you know, I think all the students had to have it done by Thursday is what I told them. So, for the most part, everyone did. Uh, extra assignment. This was for the data collection. I told students, if you're not at proficient yet for your semester tests, you can do this extra credit assignment. I call it extra credit, but it's, I mean... I don't really do extra credit. I mean, they can do the assignments as many times as they want, so I guess kind of it, it's extra credit. But it's basically just an additional activity that they can do in order to remaster things. So if they haven't mastered something yet, they can show me mastery. So like, just by them completing it, they're not getting like points. They're just showing me that they understand a concept. So I don't really think it's extra. I don't, I don't know. I don't really call it extra credit because I don't think it is. Like it's. I feel like a lot of teachers are like, hey, do these 10 worksheets that don't really prove you know anything and I'll oh, we'll give you a bunch of extra credit. I don't believe in that. I feel like it's a big waste of time for the student and the teacher. So I would rather them actually show me that they've learned something and then accomplish that task. So that is an extra credit assignment. Again, it's a YouTube video. Feel free to check it out. I think I posted three YouTube videos. No, just two. Uh, moving down, let's see. We have Thursday, December 6th. We learned more about our category, so we started talking more about like what your category was. 
the students had to take, um, we call it step one. In fact, I think I have it in here somewhere. I can click that open for you. Yeah, it's this thing right here. So this is the Thursday link that it takes them to. Like you can see, I got students already in the bubble right now. Um, students have these five categories they can pick from for their projects. So they can make a documentary, they can do a website, a performance, an exhibit, blah, blah, blah. A lot of different things they can do. It's really fun, it's really exciting. The kids get to create these really cool things. And by the end of it, you know, we really create these are really amazing big projects. So for me, it's just, it's fun to see. It's fun to see how creative they get. I really just enjoy it all around. Um, I tell the students about each one. I'll just go ahead and click into one. This is documentary. So this is the documentary one. Each one has different steps. So they all have like first step, second step though. And the students are expected to click on the links and follow the directions. So like here, they have to read these pages. They have to read these, they have to just continue to do the activities, and they have to take notes the entire time. So they have to take notes on all this stuff and then show me that they understand, that they've gotten ideas from these things, that they're really trying to reflect on all this stuff. So that's really the big step is they're trying to really reflect and show me that they're trying to understand like what they can do to make this project the biggest and best project they've ever done. And like what skills do they want to bring into it? Like I'm constantly reminding them, like, bring in your passions, bring in your skills. Like, what do you want to be when you grow up? Do those things that you want to be and bring them into your project. Like, don't ever just walk through school and just try to get it done. Like, enrich yourself, empower yourself. And, you know, many of them, I think, do get it, and some of them don't. But as the projects go, I think they'll get it more. So, again, this is the most exciting time. I hope to see, like, many students bring in their stuff. I've already had a few have some really cool ideas. So I'm excited to see it, but they had to do this first thing on Thursday. And just kind of teaches them, like, what basically that project is. It gives them the rules and stuff. Um, going back to our little thing, here we are. Um, they had to do a primary, secondary source discussion and quiz. Just kind of a refresher on what primary, secondary sources are. The ones who failed the quiz had to read an article. Pretty painless. Um, they got more time to develop research questions. So I must have been wrong. They must have been. They must have been due on Friday, but so they kept on doing that. And then on Friday, I still have my mandatory vocab test. If they have not passed their quarter two vocab test, they still need to pass those. There was a video lecture. I'm still doing history, so we still talk about American Revolution, so that's what we're on right now. We're pretty much finished with it. Um, the students have learned, you know, why the American Revolution got started, who, you know, like, basically how it worked out, why the Americans won in the end. Um, you know, I don't spend a lot of time in class, though, making the memorized definitions. We don't do a lot of review games. You know, and to be honest, that's just not what I think history's about. I don't really feel like that's what's important. Um, now, I'm an historian. I have a master's in history, and I know a lot about history, and I still have a lot more to learn, but I think the best things to teach students about history is how relatable it can be, how much it can teach us about the present, and and how fun it can be, like how enjoyable it can be to connect to your passions. I think at this grade, especially this age of adolescence, that's the best thing we can teach them about history. If they want to learn more about history, they can go to college and learn, because, I mean, honestly, History classes in college are the exact same in high school. They are no different. Like, it is lecture. So, really, if kids want that stuff, they can go to college and learn history. Or they can just read books. Um, study guides right here on Friday. The study guide's also on Friday. Actually, I'll even show you the Team Haleakala calendar. So, this is the calendar that we always use for my team. I can post that in the uh, video description, too. And, whew, it's a long video, 13 minutes. Um, the video always will be right here on Friday. Okay, so... That's it. I don't want to take any more time. If you have any questions, please let me know. And that's all. So if you're a parent, you can ignore me. Teachers who watch these, hello. If you would like to learn more, if you want to be a part of this discussion, if you want to help me out, I'd appreciate it. Um, like I said earlier in the video, I don't think many people actually, you know, do a lot of analysis in class. Like, I think you do analysis, but I don't think we do a good enough job connecting the dots of how the analysis affects their lives. So... I would like to see more of that. But I'm going to go ahead and get off here. Uh, check out the other stuff. Check out the video description. And I'm out of here. Have a great day. Bye.